So good morning on Acadiana's Morning News. It is hard to believe that today is already October the 8th and happy to welcome in the studio this morning, Simone Champagne. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are, are you? you? We're doing great this morning. Nice, cool morning. Uh, yeah, right? Okay. We've been waiting for this. Oh, yeah. Such a relief. It My is. goodness. It now, I know it'll only stick around for a couple of days, but by the weekend, it's going to get a little bit better. Yeah, but it's, so it's fall. Fall is in the air. That's right. So we're taking good. it. That's right. <laughs> so thank you for agreeing to do this. We certainly do appreciate that. Well, I appreciate y'all. And uh, just being able to have the chance to to talk one-on-one and, and not have to worry about, oh, it needs to all be condensed into five or six minutes, which is pretty much impossible. So, all right. So first question is one we love to kind of throw at candidates, and that has to do with, These weeks on the campaign trail, what has it been like in terms of learning something about the city of Lafayette and the parish of Lafayette that maybe you you didn't know before or even anything that surprised you about something about our community that maybe you thought, wow, I didn't know that? Really, uh, it's been wonderful. To answer the first question, it's been wonderful on the campaign trail. Made many new friends and supporters along the way as well as listening to their concerns Mm -hmm. about the parish and the city. And uh, I'll be perfectly honest, there really hasn't been anything on the trail that I did not realize prior to getting into this race. Mm -hmm. Uh, The issues uh, that we have today were issues, long-term issues. I tell people they didn't happen over just the last four years. They've been accumulating over time. Mm -hmm. So really and truly, no new issues. Uh, as I went, just met very good people, have very good supporters. So we hear that drainage is something that pops up, roads and bridges. What kind of things were you hearing? Yes, definitely. Drainage is number one. And I will say uh, all of the candidates know that has to be a priority. And it is true. Drainage, I think what brought the attention of our drainage problems was after the 2016 flood, Mm -hmm. when we had so many homes that were devastated throughout the our parish, yeah. over 4,000 yeah. through parish-wide, which was horrible. So we had never felt that devastation before. So what it what happened is it brought this issue to the forefront in this campaign, and rightly, rightfully so. It is a basic uh, infrastructure need of what our taxpayers are paying for. They need to be protected. They need mm-hmm. to feel safe. Uh, anxiety levels when it rains uh, get so high, mm-hmm. and I understand that. You know, people have lost everything and have to rebuild. So anxiety is there. So drainage, yes, number one priority across the board. Do you feel as if, like when you're going door to door, if it's not drainage or infrastructure, you know, I think it's kind of like, as you said, as you pointed out, if the 2016 flooding had not happened, it it might have just been status status quo. Correct. Somewhat. Because I think as people... We do. We kind of sit back and we get a little bit relaxed because Mm -hmm. we have to, because it's the job of elected officials to deal with this stuff every day. And for the rest of us to be able to sit back and kind of take a, you know, sort of a passe approach. But now with social media and the things that have happened in the last five years, people are really into these issues, I think, more than they've been in the last couple of decades. Yes, they are. And and they want us to make sure that we do what's right with their tax dollars mm-hmm. uh, because they have not felt that benefit, unfortunately, over the last 20 years of some of the things that government, the basics of government should be doing for them. Mm-hmm. So that's what the 2016 flood, in my opinion, brought to the forefront. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, to do the right thing with the be good stewards of their money, you know, this is not our money. It's It's the taxpayers' money, and and there are basic needs that we need the drainage of the infrastructure, roads, sewer downtown. I mean, what what other major issue can you have downtown than to have sewer capacity? Yeah, imagine for yeah. to bring growth. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure our, our our residents feel safe in their homes and their businesses, mm-hmm. so we don't have out migration. Yeah, that is that would be a big problem. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to ask you, going back to the 2016 floods, you've been in Youngsville for the past uh, five years uh, working in city government there. What are some of the lessons that you learned? And because Youngsville has had some success coming off the 2016 floods, y'all have uh, implemented some things. 
that have uh, decreased some of the flooding. You know, we had another big rain event, a couple of big rain events recently, and Youngsville came out a lot better than they did in the 2016 flood. What are some of the lessons that you learned from the 2016 floods that you feel like you could use going forward if you're elected as mayor president throughout the parish? Well, first of all, and I think foremost, is not to deny that the parish is responsible for our coolies and our laterals. Mm -hmm. That foremost, the the parish, anytime you have a coolie or a lateral that goes through multi-jurisdictions, it is the responsibility of the parish government as a whole, Mm -hmm. not the municipality. We've also, I've also learned that there are a lot of things we can do to help those issues without a whole lot of money. And by that, some of the things we did in Youngsville is we grabbed hold of the issue when we realized that public works was not coming, parish public works was not coming Mm -hmm. into the city. So we realized we had to do something early on to make sure we at least had a little more capacity Mm -hmm. so that we could try and keep water out of these, uh, out of the people's yards and homes as best we could. So we have actually taken hold. We we uh, rented a excavator at seven thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. We hired an operator, and we've cleaned almost every coolie and lateral in the within the confines of the city of Youngsville to date for probably about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the last two years. Lots of hard work, mm-hmm. but you know what? That's a minimal amount of money to protect a home because homes are worth more than $150,000. Let's think about it that way. You know, we we also learned that even though you have uh, retention and detention ponds and subdivisions that may have been built years ago, there's something we could do about it. We actually bought a pump, and we pumped them down and lower their capacity. Mm -hmm. If they have the the way, way for all to lower their own capacity, we have asked them to lower those levels in those ponds. And people have really... Uh, been very good about doing those things mm-hmm. to protect the homeowners. Mm-hmm. So all of those things put together, we realize uh, that there is ways that we can help people. There are ways we can do that. And by doing that with minimal amount of money and watching out for our residents and the taxpayers can go a long way. Mm. Do you think politics might have taken, taken a place in in? I don't want to say a cause of that. I'm not trying to suggest that, but you know, when when you know when it's us versus them, city versus parish, or you know those types of situations, you know, do you think it, the people get lost in the shuffle a little bit? Because what I didn't understand when all that flooding happened, with the amount of people who had been complaining about their coolies not being cleaned out, that you know that there were situations, and I'm I'm I know that we have a lack of. We didn't have enough people working in public works, right? We couldn't get enough qualified people hired to do the jobs. And I know those were real issues, but it seems as if, like, somebody just kind of dropped the ball. Yes, and not only dropped the ball, but I do disagree with not having enough qualified people. We were able to hire qualified people uh, in the city of Youngsville. So, you know, I I was always told growing up, where there's a will, there's a way. And you have to have your priorities set. You have to do the right thing. And by doing the right thing, you will find a solution Mm -hmm. to the problem. How do you how are you going to prioritize? I mean, for you, what do you what's your leadership and management style? Yes. Priorities foremost and making sure everyone is accountable, Mm -hmm. because I, I tell people as an administrator, the buck stops with me. So we have to make sure everyone's accountable to the jobs that they're supposed to be doing, accountable to the contracts that we hold making sure the contracts to do these jobs, if need be, are for the right things, is to clean a coolie, not to trim trees over a coolie, but to make sure that you get that capacity level back. So the priorities for me are to make sure that we go around and we're going to survey, and I don't mean like an actual survey, Mm -hmm. but we're going to survey every roadside ditch in this parish along a parish road, Mm -hmm. because remember, we have parish roads, state roads, municipal roads. Mm -hmm. We're going to work with all three of those, though, because it makes no sense to dig a parish roadside ditch or a city roadside ditch and stop. You're not helping the issue. So we're going to have to approach it on all levels, regionally, not only within our parish, but outside of our parish. All the surrounding parishes, we accept their water. And then we send our water to someone else. Poor people in Vermilion Parish got to deal with all of it. That's correct. So we have to operate as a regional. 
low-hanging fruit I tell people is making sure our roadside ditches are clean, our drains. Mm -hmm. I use this example. You know, downtown Lafayette has flooded for years. And um, I love Pop's Po' Boys. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I I go by and when there's – I'm sure they have anxiety also. Because when you pass, when it really rains, there's a Mm -hmm. sandbag by Mm -hmm. their door. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't want to see that, and we don't want – people to see that either mm-hmm. but what i tell people is you know we love our mardi gras parades mm-hmm. here in uh, acadiana mm-hmm. and lafayette aren't they exciting oh my gosh and fun, yes. don't we wait for that <laughs> uh but i bet it's been pro- there's no regular maintenance program mm-hmm. it's probably been over 20 years that anyone lifted a cover on a drain so i tell wow. people i tell people you know what might be in those drains a lot of mardi gras beads beads. downtown mm-hmm. so when you clean a drain when you clean a ditch when you clean a coulee you get more capacity that that capacity is not overflowing into someone's yards or, or homes that or businesses. New, that happened in New Orleans Remember? recently where they cleaned out all the Mardi Gras beads. And, and, then, and they had the own drainage them, issues. And how many car. tons? There was a, there was a lot. Car <laughs> yeah. In one of them. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, we joke about that about the Vermilion River here right. in Lafayette, right. right? There's, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff, couches and all that. But who knows? That's correct. Who knows? You because know? if you don't look and search, you'll never know. Yeah. So those are going to be what I call low-hanging fruit that we'll be able to take care of mm-hmm. right off. We'll work on the larger issues because of funding mechanisms mm-hmm. such as uh, the common sense areas to put retention, detention, modifying ponds. Also, then the big one, dredging the vermilion, which is we all know our river bottoms and our bayous are core of engineer responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do maintenance on these. Mm-hmm. Without getting a core permit, however, you can't dig any deeper. That's when you have to start searching for core permits, mm-hmm. which could take a long time. It could take but, a long time, but and then bring you got to figure it out between the Get that capacity groups. on all of these levels while we, we're actually seeking the federal and the uh, state funding. And, look, I tell people, I'm going to go to the table and hit my fist along, uh, uh, on the table. That's <laughs> what I've always had to do to make them understand and listen. Mm-hmm. All right, coming up now. On 8-23, we're going to take a, a quick break for weather, a couple of commercials, and we'll be back. Simone Champagne joining us for this hour here on Acadiana's Morning News. When we come back, we'll talk about an us versus them mentality. Is it there? Is it not there? We're going to find out more about that coming up. Coming up now on 828 on Acadiana's Morning News, Simone Champagne joining us in studio this morning. And so let's talk a little bit Youngsville versus Lafayette. Um, so is that a real discussion that continues to go on? Uh, I don't think it should be, but yes, it is. But it's, it is Yes, it real. is still, yes, mm-hmm. it is real. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's left up to me, like I tell people, I, I have to prove leadership. Yeah. And I have to prove that you, you can trust me. Mm-hmm. What I can tell you is, though, I have represented multi-jurisdictions, two parishes, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, I heard the same thing. Uh, why would we trust you? Because we've we've always been the stepchild in this. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people, only time will show that. What I can tell you is I'm going to be fair and consistent all the way across the board, treat everyone equally. That's what I've always done in my Mm -hmm. entire life, not just in politics. And I'm going to continue doing that. Of course, I understand I have to um, earn your trust in this. I'm asking you to trust me because I know I can do it and I have done it before so everyone should be equal equal is equal equal is an extra Mm -hmm. equal is equal Mm -hmm. and i will treat everyone fair all the way across the board i also use a little analogy uh with with people and tell them i have five children think of if any of them were i tell them they're my favorite or treat them as the favorite that in my opinion wouldn't bow too well with no. the other four. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course. And it'd and, be heartbreaking. And hopefully my children all feel that I'm fair all the way across the board. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I can be fair and consistent all the way across the board. It is a, a question that comes up, and I just ask people to give me an opportunity to prove to you, just like I've proved in the past, mm-hmm. that I can do that. So why do you want to do this? Ms. Simone, what is it about all of this that makes you want to tackle these issues and problems? I I get very passionate about issues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we moved to uh, Youngsville to Lafayette Parish. Mm -hmm. We built a house in 2014. I went to work for the mayor in Mm -hmm. 2015. Uh, Best move I tell people we have ever made. We wanted a better quality of life when we came into Lafayette Parish. I was tired of seeing out-migration 
you know, and things that you can't do anything about. So I'm not one to sit back and just gripe and complain. When this came up and when President Robodeau decided not to run again, I went home and I told my husband, I said, you know what? I think I might run for that seat because I don't want to see the out-migration anymore. We have real problems. I know I can resolve those problems. I can work hard like I've always done in the past. I know the issues. I know the players. I know the state and federal government very well. I can get on the ground and work really hard January 1st or November 17th is what I tell people. (laughs) One day arrest. That's all we're going to get. One day arrest. (laughs) November 17th. And work very hard and resolve those issues for the taxpayers and the residents of Lafayette Parish. And he told me, I think you should do that. Wow. That's that's wonderful support. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about this. This, you know, people leaving. I mean, you know, if there's not opportunity, we can't expect our kids to stay. Um, What what are your answers or at least one or two of of your solutions to how we can mitigate these this issue? Yes. Well, we all know that we've lost all and gas industry Mm -hmm. in this area. It's very unfortunate that they've gone to Texas. Mm -hmm. Now, that is not really a parish uh, issue. It's more of a state issue with tort reform, Mm -hmm. which needs to that has to happen Mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge, no matter what. But it doesn't mean the leader of this parish, as the mayor president, can't go and help fight that in Baton Rouge also and bring the residents and the uh, taxpayers on board from Lafayette Parish. We know how important it is. It doesn't mean that myself, as the mayor president, can't call Houston and call some of the larger oil and gas companies or even the small companies we have left and say, what are your issues? What can we do to help you? We have the workforce. It's just unfortunate they're going to Houston. Mm -hmm. Some go for a week at a time, 30 days at a time, come back home. We have to stop that. But we have to work with our state government and be true leaders and be very vocal on those issues to help bring them back. So that's one thing I think that, not think, that I will do Mm -hmm. for the people of this this, uh, parish. Also, you know, I get back to the basic needs of government. You know, I think if people feel safe in their homes, that they're not going to have anxiety over flooding or their businesses, we will have people. How can we ask someone to locate a business here and say, oh, by the way, you may flood? Yeah, And we're not doing anything about it. That is that is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So not only that, our fire and our police protection, that's other uh, basic that's basic government that we should be taking care of. I think accountability. Mm -hmm. transparency, making sure we do what's right with the taxpayers' dollars, and uh, also supporting entrepreneurship and private business. That's what drives our sector. I truly believe that. Private investment drives us, not the government and not bureaucracy. There is no place. Government really needs to get out the way Mm -hmm. and let them uh, locate here with our support where we can within the confines of the law that we have. And support them that way. I think we will. I know that we will see growth in those areas. I'm truly confident on that. Mm-hmm. One area we haven't touched on yet um, is roads and bridges. We've mm-hmm. talked a lot about drainage. Um, your campaign focus has been on making infrastructure and drainage improvements without raising taxes on residents. What areas of the budget would you move money away from to make these improvements if taxes aren't raised? I'm, I'm a no tax person, and I believe that we have money. I do not believe there is no money. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a favorite thing in government. We don't have any Mm -hmm. money. But, you know, by the end of the fiscal year, we find in some money, either under a rock or someone's mattress. That's what I tell people, (laughs) unfortunately. So the way I'm going to find money working with the council is we're going to start at a zero-based budget. Just like I tell people we had to do. You know, my husband was an oil field worker all his life. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, when it crashed and we had kids... And a house note, we had to figure something out. Well, you know what? We set our priorities just like we should be doing in government. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and I took two jobs. He took two jobs for us to make ends meet because we had our priorities set. We needed a roof over our head, so we had to pay that house note. Mm -hmm. We needed to put food on the table. And I tell people every day, food on the table on a Friday didn't mean that we were going to eat fried shrimp that night. Yeah. It meant I was going to open a can of tuna fish, mm-hmm. and we were going to have a tuna fish sandwich mm-hmm. on a Friday night. Right. It meant no vacations. That's fluff. That's extras. Mm-hmm. It meant that we had to work hard, and I wanted to educate. We chose to educate our children in the Catholic schools. 
and that was our priorities. I'm going to do it the same way in government. Zero-based budget. We're going to go like we have zero. It can work. And then you build your budget based on what you have to pay for first. Bond issues are the same. I, I relate it to a house note. It's a bond issue. You have to pay it. Can't say, oh, I'm not paying my bond issue this month because, mm-hmm. you know what, I want to put money in someone else in a contract, for example, that mm-hmm. maybe we don't need. Mm-hmm. We have to pay that bond. So we're going to approach it the same way. What government, I think, doesn't do very well is they'll take a budget and they base the next year's budget on what they had the previous year. Right. And they add the growth, growth factor, mm-hmm. which they anticipate or um, they may say, well, we might have 3, 3% go, growth this year. So we're going to add that. Mm-hmm. But what happens? You think people say in those departments save that money? Hmm. They're going to spend not. the money. Right. No, they're going to spend it. Mm-hmm. So by going to zero base, just like our homes, our residents, and their families, and our businesses have done all these years to prosper, I don't believe that we need new taxes. I believe there is money. Now, if there isn't and I'm proven wrong, I will be the first one to come back and say I was wrong. But I think the taxpayers need to know that we are taking every precaution not to raise fees or taxes, and they have to trust us. There is no more trust, and I don't blame them, in government. You mentioned uh, not spending money on any fluff items, Mm -hmm. and you're using that in the the home budget with vacations and such. Do you think there's... What, are, are there any areas that you can identify right now that might be fluff items, if you will, in the budget Lafayette City Parish? Yes. As a matter of fact, you know, I love arts and culture. I, and I tell people every day, we are the culture. Mm-hmm. Our people are the culture. People come to Acadiana for the food, for the environment, for the uh, festivals, mm-hmm. for example. Right. So those items, however, should be done. They're driven by nonprofits. There's a good reason we have nonprofits. I love nonprofits. Nonprofits can do things that government should never even be involved in. So we need to support them. We have uh, tourism, convention and tourism gets dollars. So we have a lot of areas inside Lafayette as well as the parish that already receive tax dollars. Mm -hmm. We just need to make sure that everyone is spending it properly, and it's gone for those. And we're not duplicating benefits either. A lot of times we have a duplication of uh, services. So we're going to have to work with all of these entities to make sure that we communicate and participate, but within reason, and that all of our dollars are being spent properly. So I believe nonprofits drive this quite well, uh, very supportive of them, Mm -hmm. and I think they do a wonderful job. It's coming up now on 839. We have to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with Simone Champagne joining us for another 20 minutes or so here on Acadiana's Morning News. You're listening to Acadiana's Morning News coming up now on 844 with Simone Champagne is our guest this morning. All right. So let's talk a little bit about focusing in on the campaign itself about what will end up making we talked a little bit about priorities. We know about, you know, sewage and, and drainage and, and roads and bridges and police uh, and, and fire safety. The day-to-day things that have to get done in government. One of the big things that we would always talk about is how do we know really what's going on? And we talked a lot yesterday about transparency. How do you feel transparency will be part of the Simone Champagne administration? What do you... What do you plan in that realm? Right. Great question. Thank you. Uh, When it comes to the public, I have no problem being transparent and telling people what is going on and what are the reasons. Not only that, but bringing it to the forefront. I mean, a council meeting, you know, everyone can view a council meeting. Anyone can attend its public meetings. And bringing that to the forefront when I sit at the table on a council meeting night. Mm -hmm. And um, being there, if I disagree with something that's going on and to say I disagree and not to be silent. I think those things, making sure that I'm open to the public. You know, I've always had a, uh, a, in my, when I was in office before, I would tell everyone I have a 24-hour return call. Now, it's either me or someone that is helping me Mm -hmm. should return that call within 24 hours. Have I missed some of those? Maybe, you know, for whatever reasons. But that's a good policy. You know, people want to see me. And this is what I told all the municipalities. Why should you come see me 
in the building right there uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. Why can't I go see you? You're who I answer to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come and answer to me. Mm -hmm. So I will be out in the public more. I will be at council meetings uh, at least once a year to give my report to them and just see what their needs are Mm -hmm. all the way across the parish. Mm -hmm. That's transparency. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you'll be out and listening to the public and if they call, either I'll return that call or someone, but I will always know who's calling. Mm -hmm. That will be a part of my administration. Mm -hmm. Will be, I need that knowledge so I can make decisions based on what the public is telling you out there. I need to make sure I have more communication with the departments that are in place and make sure I relay what's going on in drainage, in public safety, so that the people know about what's going on. And, you know, I, I would love to come on the radio at least once a week Mm -hmm. and make sure that we let the people outside know Mm -hmm. what's going on and what is happening and Mm -hmm. what's happening. All of those things together. And um, I think we'll play well Mm in the public. But if the public wants more transparency, they'll get more transparency. What do you feel about whenever we talk about some of the issues with experience? I mean, you spent so much time in banking then, you know, in the legislature And, I mean, we were talking during one of the breaks. You were only one of 16 women. Yes. Um, Does that factor into experience with with this race, too? Is it – do you still face those kind of challenges? Because we were kind of briefly talking about that during the break, too. Yes, yes. But I I believe my background in banking has taught me a great deal – I mean, it gives you know how you're supposed to treat customers. Mm-hmm. Taxpayers are customers. Mm-hmm. That's what they are. So it, it taught me early on I had to be a good steward of taxpayer dollars. And that's what government is. That's what I bring with me to government. I've always done that. And, you know, in the legislature taught me a great deal. Uh, running for the legislature, for oh, example, I bet that was, interesting, was huh? uh, very interesting. You mm-hmm. know, it was 2007. And uh, I tell people a, a story about when I ran. And as a woman. Um, that when I went to one of my new municipalities and I handed out my push card, mm-hmm. one of the gentlemen uh, mm-hmm. told me the only problem they had with my push card was I had on a nice suit and you could see my knees. Well, you know what? I listened to that, though, mm-hmm. because that was a problem for them. Because for them, that was their concern. That's right. That was their issue. You didn't balk at it or no. tell them they're ridiculous or anything like that. You said, okay, I hear you. And, That's and right. here's, you know, and I took care of the issue. Mm-hmm. We we cropped my knees out of the picture because I listened to them. Mm-hmm. And that was a concern of theirs. So it's about listening to concerns. When I was in the legislature as a woman, one of only 16 out of 144, you had to make some bold moves. Mm-hmm. You had to be very strong and consistent, very consistent and do what was right to earn respect, just like you do in the public. Mm -hmm. And I tell people every day, I went to to the well quite a few times Mm -hmm. and called people out because they needed to be called out. That I bring that experience with me because it will take some of this to make sure that we move forward in the right direction. Yeah. So you have to be bold, you have to be consistent, and you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people I try to lead by example. Mm -hmm. I've taught that to my children all, uh, that's how I learned. And as a woman, you know, we had strong women in our in our family Mm -hmm. and a very strong family support, which played very well for me, I feel today. Mm -hmm. So I bring all of that along with the experience. I mean, I have legislative, I have local experience on the local level, local municipal, Mm -hmm. I have parish wide experience and I have legislative experience and I still have all those relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank goodness, because I, I feel I did it the right way. And if I could be with someone on a vote, this is what I would tell them. I can be with you. If I couldn't be with them on a vote, this is what they would tell you. She was never on the fence. Yeah. She told us why. Yeah. And she told us, and we respected that. Mm -hmm. So I think it it has to be about respect, that I have to earn people's respect. I don't expect them to do that right off. Mm -hmm. I have to earn it. I'm going to work hard for it. And about the knowledge of going in and knowing every level, not just one discipline of government either. I know every discipline of government when it comes through. I know the billing process. I know the public works process. Uh, I know the utilities process. So along with coastal issues and things that I drove in the legislature Mm -hmm. uh, to help people statewide, 
not just in the district where I represent it. It's very important, but you have to take off those blinders. Oh, boy. Yes. Working, really. working in the legislature, you had to be able to work with Republicans and Democrats, um, <laughs> but yet you have to still make sure that you maintain true to yourself and your values. How do you strike that balance, especially as it pertains to the local race here in Lafayette Parish? Yes, same way. You know, listen to the issues, debate. I always did say debate drives good policy. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that every day of the week. And do it the same way. Uh, Talk about the issues, especially with the council and the the public. Mm -hmm. And just stay true to what I believe the majority of the people of this parish expect of us and vote that way. What I tell people every day is, as a legislator, I may not have agreed with everything, but I made sure I voted the way that my constituents wanted me to vote because I listened to them. Mm -hmm. Same thing, working with the council, making sure what I have to say is said, and making sure I listen to what they have to say because, remember, they are out in their districts every day of the Mm -hmm. week also. Mm -hmm. So they are listening also. So not trying to undermine them in any way, but us working together and listening to the people. So is it less about party, more about the people? Is it important for party? Because, you know, it's, it's been interesting, this race, you know, that that's been discussed a lot, in a lot of different avenues mm-hmm. about and, it. And this is what I say. I think party is important uh, because it does show people how you, how you drive your values and mm-hmm. your morals. Uh, for example, I'm a Republican, so I'm pro-life. I'm pro-Second Amendment. Um, so it shows people will say, well, pro-life doesn't have anything to do with this race. Of course it does. It, in my opinion, it shows people how I am going to treat other people's be, people because I believe that the sanctity of life is the most important thing that we have. So if you go by those guidelines, which is a Republican philosophy, it should show people that I, I will take care of people and drive issues with common sense. And fiscal conservative, conservative. So do you think that there are some issues as a city parish president, president that you would be, you know, that you would not get into the fray, so to speak, on some of the issues? People that know me know, no, I would get into the fray. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I would, getting in it. <laughs> I would, I would voice, yes, I would voice my opinion. Mm-hmm. So talk to me, too, going back on one of the other issues we had when we were talking about Youngsville versus Lafayette. Youngsville and some of the other communities are working hard in different ways to try to get businesses to come to their municipalities. Mm-hmm. Do you think some of the things you, you, you all have done in Youngsville could be things that could be applied here in Lafayette for the benefit not only of Lafayette, but the parish as a whole. Oh, most definitely. And in saying that, now go to the Youngsville side and some of the things that we've done there. But UDC, we we have not talked about UDC. Mm -hmm. UDC was formed in about 2014 as a one-size-fits-all. Well, we all know one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. That's what we realized in Youngsville early on. One size does not fit all. And so when it wasn't working, you said, what are we going to do to make it work? That's right. What we we tell people when they come in, new businesses is – what do you, we want to help you do what you want to do with your property within the confines mm-hmm. of the law that we can, yeah. we can do. Mm-hmm. And that's what we do. We, we communicate with them. We work with them. And if it means having to waive one of the, um, one of the policies, that's not going to ill affect them mm-hmm. or the surrounding area. We do that if it makes sense. We have also, um, so you relieved, don't need $100,000 worth of trees no, necessarily. You don't. I mean, what if a, a small business person, you know, whatever the case may be, it's somebody who wants a bakery or a, you know, I mean, the, the, I guess your philosophy is if it doesn't impact negatively in a terrible way, then it can be something that falls by the Correct. wayside. Correct. We, we look at those. We, mm. we even have a residential neighborhood that's coming up that we had to waive some of the criteria through our ordinance because they wanted just a different type of subdivision. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, our mayor and the council are very good about doing those things because it makes sense as mm-hmm. long as it doesn't affect someone negatively. Mm-hmm. So that's what I tell people every day. We want to make sure you can do what you want to do with your property within the confines of the laws that we have to work with. And if, if I can't help you, if it's something that we need to waive, we'll go to the council and mm-hmm. we'll give that, uh, 
you know, we will give that effort for you to do that. Mm -hmm. We waived permitting fees mm -hmm. for the last two years, just a permitting fee, because what we tell people is we would much prefer you take that money and invest it back in your business. Mm -hmm. Those are things we can do. So would you make sweeping changes to the UDC? Yes, sir, most definitely. Because, like I said, one size does not fit all. We need to make sure that, and we have building codes in place, and that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, because we need to make sure our homes, our residents, and our businesses are protected. That's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to other things in the UDC, yes, we will make changes to the UDC. Okay, interesting. All right, what about, do you feel, lessons that you might have learned from your time um, in Youngsville in this post that you would take with you to be a mayor president for Lafayette? Because, I mean, obviously, the size of the municipality of Youngsville is very different from the size of the municipality for the city of Lafayette and then obviously for mm -hmm. the parish as well. Yeah. And, I mean, I've learned a great deal. I tell people uh, throughout life, mm -hmm. in every role I have had, I learned something different. Mm -hmm. But what I'll bring is basically common sense knowledge of uh, what needs to be done because I didn't have prior to Youngsville the local municipal mm -hmm. um, even though I was in the parish so I understood it sure so I bring that with me of um, the municipal side mm -hmm. as well as the parish side because I've done that in the state side so all of those lessons I call it and this is what I tell people I'm 64 years old mm -hmm. uh, I learn something new every day and hope I learn something new every day until I'm no longer here mm -hmm. on earth. And I also have a goal. I've always taught my kids, don't ever let a day go by that you don't have a goal. Because that's when we get stagnant. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, every day we're going to work hard, just like I've worked hard in all of my career. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring different options out. And we're going to drive the economy. Uh, real quick, uh, small business committee maybe mm -hmm. something that you would think would be useful beneficial oh, oh most definitely involving because i i tell people every day our small businesses i call them our mom and pops guess who's been here all their lives guess who Those donates yeah, to the schools true. and nonprofits? they do they come to the forefront for us mm -hmm. we don't pay them enough attention in government Yes, most definitely. We will have those types of committees in place and transition teams so that we know how to help them and see how to keep we can help keep them in business. We shouldn't just always try to offer all the incentives to the big boxes that may come here anyway, and then we'll leave at the drop of a hat. Our mom and pops supported us. They supported the parish. They supported our schools. They supported our churches. We need them here. We need them in business. They drive our economy. The last uh, 30 seconds is always for the candidate. Uh, so Simone Champagne has been joining us uh, for this hour. So if you would, uh, some thoughts for listeners this sure. morning. Sure. Thank you. Well, thank you all for having me. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate this hour. I wish we had another hour, uh, <laughs> maybe later on. <laughs> but um, I'd just like to thank everyone. It has been a true, wonderful experience for me to go throughout this parish, meet new people, new friends. Uh, that's the takeaway. We have real issues here, though, and I want to attack those issues. I've been very consistent in my messaging all the way across the board and what needs to be done. I can do the job. I will do it fairly, honestly, and equally all the way across the board. And I hope and would be humbled by your vote on October 12th, Saturday, number 91. All right. Simone Champagne has been joining us for this hour. And, of course, coming up this weekend, we do know we've got that primary election Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Simone, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you all. Thank you.